I would like to acknowledge the following peoples who have taken care of the land that is known as Tikarongo, where we gather and learn today. Uh, the Nishnabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee uh, Confederacy, and the Huron Wendat. Tikarongo is now home to many First Nation, Inuit, and Métis communities. I acknowledge them and also pay my respects to them. So as I said, we are going to take a look at Mahara and Moodle, a match made for learners. And um, as Mahara project lead, I do love talking about Mahara, but I've also been using Moodle for many, many years. And so if there's any integration questions, happy to also chat with you about them. Mahara is um, a complementary system really to the learning management system because in the learning management system, oftentimes we talk about the management of the learning where the teacher is in control, the teacher decides what goes on, what students can do. And so in 2005, when the project originated and development work started in 2006, a number of tertiary institutions in New Zealand thought, well, we kind of want to put the learner in the center of attention and um, give them the control because it's not just about management. And of course, at that time, storage was also quite costly. And so oftentimes courses were just emptied out at the end of a term and students did not have access to their form entries anymore and to all their assessments. So they really needed a place where they could keep their own learning. And that's where Mahara comes in. Because there we really have the learner in the center of attention um, and make sure that everything evolves around them. And so as portfolio platform, it is quite flexible because we can use portfolios for learning where students oftentimes don't even need to share their work with anybody else, but where they just want to reflect on their own, showcase what they have been doing. But of course, because students are students, and so oftentimes they do want to get a grade for it, they want to get some credit for something that they have done, we are also using it for assessment purposes quite a bit. And that is where Moodle comes in. And I'll look into the integration with Moodle just in a little bit for that. But yes, a Portfolios for Assessment is very much around authentic activities, things that students have experienced, um, be that in class or outside of class. And increasingly, portfolios are also used for work integrated learning. So when students go to an internship, to an externship, to a work placement, you at sitting at the university may not really know what they are doing there unless they call you or come back to class. Whereas with a portfolio, they can report on what they are doing at the internship and you can give them feedback on it. You can engage with them in that learning process and they just capture all of that in their portfolio. Because who wants to do a quiz on an internship really? And so with authentic learning activities, that's what students can do directly in the portfolio, create their learning evidence. Many of you will probably have encountered portfolios though, mainly as showcase or presentation portfolios. Maybe you've used it yourself already by applying for a job that you maybe have right now. When we at Catalyst try to hire developers, we look at their portfolio and their portfolio is the commit history. Um, of work that they have done or projects they have engaged in. Um, if you're a learning designer, people don't necessarily want to know at which university you graduated from or which classes you've taken, but they also want to see what Moodle courses you've created, what other content you've created, so that they actually know, yes, the work that they produce is the work that I would like to have at my university. And that's the power of the uh, portfolio, because you can show your learning evidence. And that, of course, mainly I've been talking about higher education now, but also schoolwork. But increasingly, we are also seeing portfolios in the workplace. Um, for example, for professional certifications. In New Zealand, we work quite extensively with nurses and also pharmacists, and they create portfolios every single year. Pharmacists need to be recertified every year. On the 1st of April, they get a new portfolio template, which they then fill out for the rest of the year. The nurses have a three-year cycle, so they work on their portfolio for three years, put in their continuing professional development activities, have peer assessment in their manager assessment, and all of that collected in a portfolio because they don't just want to have tick, uh, tick box activities 
and say, yes, I've participated in this training, but the healthcare districts are really interested in knowing what they have learned, what they are taking with them for their future practice. And that is where the portfolio comes in. And so while I've shown you now five different types of portfolios that can be created in Mahara, it's really oftentimes a combination of them because content from a learning portfolio can be used in an assessment portfolio. It can also be used in a presentation portfolio. You might want to take some things out, put some other things in. And so you can really have a wide variety of activities that are being done in a portfolio and also serve multiple purposes. And so you might ask, well, can you show me examples? Yes, I can show you an example and happy to do that in tomorrow's session because there'll be another part for it. Um, and, but oftentimes portfolios are just for an educator available or just for a small group of people because oftentimes there is lots of confidential information that is being shared, which people don't necessarily want to make public. But we certainly have some really nice examples uh, that I can show you. But I'm not just here to tell you about Mahara, but very briefly before we go into the Moodle part, also show you kind of the type of activities you would be doing. And in English, it is five Cs. Thankfully, in French, the translator of my slides, my colleague Noemi, assures me, even though one of the words is in, starts with an S, it's actually pronounced more like a C, so it still works. So please bear with me for that. And so the first activity you would do is to create content. Um, but that typically, because it's a portfolio, happens outside. It happens here. You create content for your own learning. You might take notes. You might reflect on what you have learned. You might want to get in touch with Patrick and with Donald later on in order to check out the AI. You might want to reflect on if that is something you'd like to incorporate into your course. That happens outside of the portfolio. What you would do in the portfolio is then collect all of those things because all of us are reflecting on a constant basis, but we are not necessarily writing it down or sharing that with other people. And that's where the portfolio comes in. You collect all your learning evidence and then you curate it. And that's where in French we've got the Sélectionné and Organisé because curate does not apparently really exist so much. And so what you do with that is really pick the important bits and pieces that are important for your own journey, learning journey. So you never give everybody everything that you have done because that is way too much data. You select what is important. You select what you want to show in a particular context. And that is where selectionieren and um, organizing comes in. And because learning hardly ever happens in a vacuum, here we are all learning from each other, it is very much also around having conversations with other people, engaging them in the learning process, asking them for feedback on learning evidence, asking them for feedback on a reflection, sharing the portfolio with them in order to learn together. But we can also work together and connect by creating group projects, group portfolios, engage in communities of practice, have a group on Mahara where um, educators and also students talk about um, portfolios, talk about their experiences and really share what they have learned and then continue either together or individually on that learning journey. But now, it's finally time that I tell you when Moodle comes in because you're here at a Moodle mood, so of course we need to talk about Moodle. So if you have been working with Moodle and Mahara for the longest time, you would have come across the term Mahoodle, Mahara, and Moodle. But we kind of now keep those two a um, little bit separate and just talk about Moodle and Mahara and the integration. And that happens these days very much that you can log into Moodle, go into Mahara, and automatically be logged in. Don't need to um, know another credential. And the other way around is you can send your Mahara content to Moodle for assessment purposes. From the Moodle side to Mahara, you can also send content um, via web services, sorry, via web services over to Mahara so that you don't have to fill in kind of profile information or things like that. And we are leveraging very much LTI for that, learning tools interoperability. And um, while there is a 
an external tool that you could use, you can also use the Mahara Assignment Submission plugin, which is way more comfortable to use because of the reasons that I'm going to show you shortly. So the external tool comes included in Moodle. Nobody needs to install anything. Your system administrators don't need to rebut to install anything. You can just run with it, put credentials in, and off you go. The plugin, um, however, integrates really nicely with the regular assignment module in Moodle, which makes it much better because on the external tool, if you've ever used it, there are not really a lot of opportunities for grading things because everything happens always on the other side, happens on the external tool side. So the only thing that Moodle ever gets back is a number. It's a grade, and that's it. Because currently, there is no way to actually have an LTI activity in the Moodle assignment. As far as I know, that is currently being worked on and will make things so much easier. But for the time being, you need a plugin. Because with the Mahada Assignment Submission plugin, what you have available is all the grading tools that you use, love, and maybe use more of, like the rubrics, marking workflow. You can also have uh, multiple graders go through and all the things that your educators know so that you don't have to tell them something new. But they can use all the tools they are already used to and can get going straight away. Now, no matter whether you use the external tool or the plugin, you can archive portfolios that have been submitted, which is often really necessary, especially when you use an assessment workflow. And so in addition to that, what the plugin allows you to do is connect to our original. That used to be Okund, and we are watching the space with Turnitin quite closely because they are currently working on an extension to the assignment module in Moodle in order to make integration there better and easier. So in future, maybe at some point we won't even need a plugin anymore. So what does it look like? Um, we have our submission settings in the Moodle assignment. And there, once you have the plugin installed, you can simply select it. And then you can see whether the portfolio should be archived or should be locked, should not be locked. So you have a number of um, pedagogical tools available in order, in order to see how you want to work with a um, portfolio. And you can also decide whether you want to archive the portfolio or not. Now, if I'm a student, um, once I have created a portfolio, it shows up directly in my Moodle assignment. So I can select it from within Moodle in order to submit it so that it then goes into the gradebook. Now, as teacher, all I need to know of creating a portfolio really is going to the gradebook, selecting the link to the portfolio, and then I have a view of it. And I can then use my regular uh, grading method, simple grading method, just putting a grade in, providing some feedback. Or alternatively, I could also use a rubric that I have um, selected beforehand, created in order to give more uh, qualified feedback. And that is how the Mahada Assignment Submission Plugin works. Mahada, like Moodle, is an open source um, software that is published under the GNU Public License version 3 and therefore also makes it possible to host your Mahada instance yourself or to use a service by one of the Mahada partners that um, give you Better options sometimes in automatically pulling security updates or being updated to a latest version. And of course, you have also lots of configuration and customization options available. It is also fully translated into French, um, more Swiss French and French French rather than Canadian French. But um, there is definitely the possibility to make any of those adjustments for yourself or also if you want to adjust more language strings there, that is uh, a possibility too. And of course, you can also contribute. In contrast to Moodle, we actually don't really have a lot of plugins. The Mahara Assignment Submission plugin for Moodle is one of our biggest plugins that we have. And that goes to the comments that um, had been made earlier, because we know that a lot of organizations cannot install plugins. And so we as product team for Mahara have decided that most of the functionality that we are looking into integrating and using in portfolios 
actually goes into the core product. Um, in order to make it easier for organizations to just install the software and run with it. Now, if you have been in the Mahara community already, you do know that we've switched um, how the project works and what open source means to us last year when we had consultations with community members on the future of the project, the sustainability of the project. Because again, in contrast to Moodle, the Mahara developer community is really, really tiny. Um, and so most of the work actually happens in Tefanganui Atara, Wellington, and Aotearoa, New Zealand, where I live, despite my German accent that you hear right now. And so we needed to look at, well, what possibilities are there for us as open source project to sustain the development of the software when it is mainly based with one company? And that is where, after a number of consultation sessions then, we settled on a subscription model, which makes it possible that really everybody who is using the software is contributing a little bit of money to, to it, um, in contrast to oftentimes not having contributed much, if anything at all, beforehand, therefore allowing us as main contributors to continue with that contribution. And so that allows us to continue with the work make it a sustainable project so that we can provide security updates, new version upgrades. We've just released Mahara 2404 uh, last Friday. And so all of that work is also thanks to all the contributors and um, subscribers that make it possible that we can continue. It also allows us to have a more defined roadmap um, that is long-term so that there's more certainty in the development and also that um, bigger projects can be handled that oftentimes we just needed to put onto the back burner because there was no funding available. Now, I gave you the link to the presentation, and so I'm really not going to go into the detail of our roadmap because there's a lot of content on there. So please do check it out or, and talk with me over the next couple of days if you're interested to learn more. Our roadmap is in three time tranches, short term, Mahara 2404, but also continues for the next few months, then the next two to three years, and then the next five years. And we have three categories, which are create, everything around portfolio creation, um, then collaborate, everything around engagement, and also management and administration, because everything on the back end needs to continue. And so we have a lot of elements on our long-term roadmap, short-term roadmap, that I'd really, if you're interested in portfolios, encourage you to check out. Some of that is also AI-related because, of course, we are watching that space closely as well. And so how can you stay connected? Well, we do have a monthly newsletter where we also share stories from our community and where we um, tell you about events where you can also learn more about portfolios. So do sign up for them and uh, get it delivered to your inbox. And if you are already using portfolios, I'd very much like to invite you to come onto my podcast, Create, Share, Engage, where we are sharing stories from the community of how people are using portfolios, no matter the platform, because we are also very much interested in the pedagogical elements, why people are using it, how they are integrating it with LMSs and the like. And then if you have any other questions after that, and you didn't catch me maybe today, tomorrow, or next week in Montreal, then please do feel free to send me a message, and I'd love to have a chat with you. So thank you so much, and I think you have a few minutes.